Here we are at the Santa Barbara City College Lifescape Garden and uh, just want to look at some uh, possibilities on how uh, water could be harvested here. So first let's just look uh, right here uh, to my left and we can see that uh, the, the general landscape is uh, higher than the adjoining path here and uh, we've got drip irrigation line running through it. Uh, that's fine that there's a uh, drip irrigation line there to give it some supplemental water in the dry season, but uh, there's, there's no containment at the moment, no means by which to harvest the free water, the rain falling from the sky, because the general slopes off this, encouraging runoff, uh, with one exception, and that is at least there's a good amount of organic mulch. So this is a great sponge that will capture the falling rain and let it infiltrate. But if we were to get a real big downpour, there's a chance that uh, the mulch couldn't hold it all. So just a berm on this downslope side could be beneficial so that uh, surplus water would be caught behind that, build up behind it, and it could then infiltrate. Uh, another thing is the paths, rather than being sunken, could be raised to either side and then they could shed their runoff into the same basin, uh, creating a basin, actually. Uh, another thing is we've got this roof right here um, and that's uh, a great potential water source. Uh, the, the surface area of that roof is more or less the same as the surface area of this garden. Um, and uh, here in Santa Barbara, the annual rainfall is, uh, is, is it 12 to 18 inches of, about 18 inches of rain a year? Well, you could double the amount of available rainfall right here because you would get 18 inches falling from the sky for this area and you could direct the roof runoff and the 18 inches of rain falling on that to this same part of the garden, doubling the available rainfall. And if that water were stored in tanks or infiltrated into the soil, you would have more water lingering longer into the dry season and you could thereby shrink or reduce the duration of the dry season um, by at least a month um, and thereby uh, reducing the need for supplemental irrigation from, say, the municipal water supply. Uh, and you could enhance the water resources even further still. Because as we, I look on the wall here, we've got a drain pipe, okay? So this is used to drain a drinking fountain. Um, and that water, instead of just going down to the sewer, it could be redirected into the landscape. So even in the dry season, there is a source of water. Uh, on top of that, we've got this copper line. Um, and this, I think, was the source to the drinking fountain. It's since been removed. But look for those copper pipes as they come out of an air conditioning unit. Because uh, air conditioners, uh, they uh, will produce air conditioning condensate, naturally distilled water that will condense around uh, the condensing unit of, of the machine. That water can be directed to your landscape as well. So th these are just usually untapped sources that we can use to, again, get through the dry season without so much reliance upon potable drinking water. And I, I wanted to just point out that currently the rainwater from the roof is coming on down and then it enters this area. Now, there's some great potential here. A number of bowl-like shapes have been created with berms around it. This is where the densest vegetation should be <laughs> of the site because this is where we have rainfall. We have runoff from the roof and not only that, we also have a lot of runoff coming from this concrete surface. It looks like a combination of concrete and asphalt, that whole patio. That in a sense is a ground level roof surface. So we could triple our available rainfall here. Rain from the sky, runoff from the roof, runoff from the patio, all right? But uh, there's very little vegetation currently in place. So I would advocate for more plantings around here if you have vegetation that is not um, 
adapted to periodic inundation with water if it needs better drainage. It would go here on the high point so the root crown stays high and dry, but the roots can grow in and access the water. Um, and then if you've got more water tolerant vegetation, the vegetation you would find typically growing in an ephemeral waterway, uh, that can go here in the low spot. You're just mimicking the natural pattern. Um, and we also, if we have a gray water source from the pipe, that can be sent into the same area. So your rain garden also acts as a gray water garden. All right? And then the rain water's there when you have rain, the gray water's there when you have no rain, and the other advantage is when the rain comes back in, it will flush and leach salts out of the root zone of the plants. Salts introduced by the municipal water that comes down the gray water drain and the soaps that may also come down uh, the, the municipal drain. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the, the household drain. Um, so those are just some things to consider and some concepts when you're looking at what is the potential of the site. And I'll add one more. If, uh, if you're wanting some fruit production, say some exotic fruit trees, uh, I would tend to place those closer to where I have a greater concentration of water resources. This seems like a great spot. Again, putting the fruit trees on the higher parts so the roots can access the water in the lower spots. And then as I go up further from the water resources, I would be selecting more indigenous plantings, native plants that are already adapted to the local rainfall and soil types. And uh, by doing simple earthwork, starting from the top and working down, they would have more rainwater available to them, but uh, they'd be too distant to tap into the runoff from the roof or this surface. Um, but that's fine. They're already adapted to that. So we create a more productive, lower maintenance landscape right around where the resources are. <laughs>